uh, an interesting thing because Gordon definitely said he wanted the car to be... car is back from having its exhaust done. Went over to BTB and Joe and the team over there have made the whole lot manifold system all the way front to back. Um, and just after the car went there, we snuck over there and that went over to have a little behind the scenes look at what was involved with that. Hi Joe. Dad. Welcome to BTB. Yeah, there's a few examples in here of sort of things that we get involved in. Um, this is a, a manifold for an Aston uh, V8, sort of 70s Aston V8. Yep. Um, typically, these days when um, owners are getting the engines rebuilt, they're probably rebuilding them with a bigger capacity, some more tuning mods, maybe an upgraded management system, that kind of thing. So this is actually effectively the Vantage spec exhaust, which they ran in period albeit slightly refined. So it's a bigger bore, slightly more equal lengths, um, slightly improved gasket and sealing system than they used to have, which was just a flat gasket. These are actually machine flanges, which spigot in to each other to stop one of the problems where they had it all blowing between the joins. Um, and so they're actually quite a popular thing to have now because once somebody spent all that money rebuilding their engine to six or seven litres, um, the exhaust, the original exhaust is then going to hold it back quite a lot, so putting a better exhaust on can release suddenly 30, 40 horsepower. Mm -hmm. Seems like a, you know, a good way to spend the money. So, and that's, that's quite good business for us, those sort of things. Mm -hmm. These are actually for a, a race car um, that we're doing, just ready to go out, just waiting for the rest of the exhaust system to, be, to go along with it. Um, even E30 BMW manifolds up there, mm -hmm. um, sort of a retro modding again, same sort of thing, you know, people will, will upgrade the engines and um, want a suitable exhaust to go with it. So CNC tube bender, um, sort of mainstay of what we do. Um, we don't always use it for multiple bends, but we can actually do multiple bends yeah. in the same piece of tube and get the rotational angle between each bend um, right. As well as exhaust systems, we do quite a lot of tube bending for um, chassis roll hoops, typically right, yeah. um, chassis rails, water pipes, intercooler pipes, all that kind of stuff as well. So um, we've got quite a lot of tooling that you can see up there with all the different sizes and radii. Whatever tooling you've got, there's always something that you're yeah, missing, yeah. and somebody will ask you to do the impossible. <laughs> and, it, and it's very expensive. Yeah, it yeah. is very expensive. There's probably as, as much of an investment in tooling yeah, as there is in the machine. machine. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this actually is a little bit unusual because it's a, a left-handed machine, so it bends from left to right. Yeah. So anti-clockwise as opposed to clockwise, because we felt that we tend to get asked for the impossible. So if we've yeah. got something that's slightly different to everyone else, yeah. there's more chance that we can do it.
so this is the first go that we had at fitting actual pipes into the space. Um, we're trying to always get the primaries the right length, so yep. that's the sort of main stipulation, um, to get them all equal as well as the, the target length. It's also it's a four into two into one. I, I think there was scope to maybe compromise on a four into one. Yeah. Um, if, if it had been really tight, but we're still planning to get a four into two into one. The, yeah. the current sort of thinking on exhaust of this nature, of, of engines of this nature, is that um, a four into two into one, if you've got long enough primaries, seems yeah. to give the benefit of a four into one in terms of the top end horsepower um, at, the high, at the top end of the rev yeah. range without losing any um, torque in the mid-range um, and lower down the RPM scale. At the moment, it's looking, looking pretty good as though we can get that in there. So um, this pipe, obviously, because it's um, encroaching quite a lot on, the, on where the, the oil tank is going to be, we're going to stand that up a bit more. Um, this middle pipe here will go in at the moment, but we can't get it in and out of the car with that on, so that's going to have to be developed a little bit more. But that's the kind of thing that we then will take that away and look at it into CAD, try the changes that we want to make, and then make sure that the lengths are still equal yeah. um, in yeah. CAD because it's much easier to just manipulate them a, a little bit here and there. Yeah, definitely makes sense. That is going to be, yeah, that's, that would probably just fit at that, I would say. That's probably the, the question you were having the other day. I would think that will just about fit at that. But yeah, there's, uh, yeah, it's, it's always yeah. would be nice to have the real thing because there's, there's yeah, radii yeah. and things on there that, yeah, yeah. that you can't be. Yeah replicated in cardboard yeah but we'll we'll do it yeah, yeah. we've we've taken some measurements of the surroundings um we've got a portable measuring arm we've taken some hard points if you like yeah. which we'll, we, we'll show you in the cad that we've got of that actual manifold that will's been working on and, and in some ways even though it's a bespoke job and you know we know it's a one-off it's almost inevitable that somebody else will probably end up with a Juratec in an escort yeah, with yeah, a similar kind yeah. of cross member. That it, so it's worth us putting the extra time in really to get it, yeah. get it right and know that we've got it right. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if you sort of cut corners at this stage on this car, then th there's always the question, then if it's a little bit down on power somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you then know, you've got to do it all again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and so on. So yeah. it's nice to be able to prove that you've, you've got it pretty much as it's designed to be. guys uh, at BTB made the exhaust system and they've done a, a lovely job. The dimensions of the um, primary and secondary pipes were specified by Cosworth um, and they've done two inch diameter primaries. Uh, it goes four into two into one. The one running through is two and three quarter inch. Um, and then probably the most significant detail really to mention is that we've done a couple of interchangeable sections on it. Um, so we've got a cat in the downpipe because um, we're, we're building this basically to comply with modern uh, emissions regulations. That cat has got flanges both ends with clamps uh, and we've had BTB make a delete pipe basically. Um, so you can un unclip the cat and, and clip in the other one. Uh, and the, there are two silencers, there's a large back box and there's a small box just in front of the axle, which is also, we've had a delete pipe made, there's, again there's a, a V-band clamp in front and behind that, so you can just unclamp that, that silencer and put a straight pipe in. So for track action or if you're feeling like breaking the rules a little bit, 
<laughs> then you can basically delete the delete one of the silencers, delete the cat. You can make it quieter or, or louder, depending on what you want, which is uh, an interesting thing because Gordon definitely said he wanted the car to be loud, not not like overbearing and annoyingly loud when you're in the car, but he likes to be able to hear the exhaust note. Um, and Joe's done a couple of cars for him before and said the same. That he, I think he even said that he did a system for him once and he said it was too quiet, so we had to take it back and take some of the silencing out of it. So we wanted to have that option in there so we could make it a little bit louder if necessary. <laughs> We were waiting for the exhaust to come back um, so we could tackle a kind of domino effect of jobs that that was holding up. Um, the dry sump tank, we got the machine components back from machining whilst the exhaust was being done, um, which in theory allowed us to fabricate that tank. But we wanted to actually fit it in the car with the exhaust in there and be absolutely sure that all of that worked together before committing to welding the, the welded sections of the tank together. And we were waiting to then get the tank anodized with a load of other things that were getting anodized. And we were waiting for the exhaust and the machine parts for that. So there's kind of been this domino effect of jobs uh, waiting, but we've now been able to tackle all of those. The dry sump tank components, we've designed the, the, the sump tank to have three machined parts. And then in between those, those machine pieces, there is fabricated sheet aluminium that's then welded in place. Um, so we were waiting for the machine parts to be made. We, we drew those and designed them and they were sent to, the drawings were sent to Alitech in Silverstone to do the machining. I think there was a bit of a delay on that because they were having a new machine installed, but it was worth the wait because the job they've done is absolutely spectacular. There are three machine components in the dry sump tank. Uh, one at the bottom, which effectively forms the sort of smooth radius base of the tank. Um, but also has threaded bosses in it for temperature sender, a drain plug, there's the main outlet of the tank, um, and then there are two threaded inserts sort of machined, incorporated into the design that's machined into the bottom of the tank, which is how it actually attaches at the bottom. Um, then there are two components at the top which are machined, um, this part here and this part here. The very top piece is effectively just a, t a top cap which caps off the whole top part of a tank and has the breather outlet on it um, and obviously a threaded neck for the cap. Um, and part of the design was that this threaded spigot that attaches to the breather tank is actually also what retains the top of the tank. It's, it's supported at the base, but what stops it moving side to side is that a threaded union is actually threaded through from underneath into that billet top part and that actually anchors the top of the tank. So there's not really any visible brackets as such on there it's it's all designed to mount directly um, that will then feed through to a separate tank which is mounted under the inner wing which we haven't made yet but that'll be the breather tank um, and then the last billet part is this lower top section um, which incorporates the return oil flow from the cooler in the front here and this was all kind of uh, designed when we had the car in bare metal the the front section of the dry sump tank sticks out under the slam panel here um, and that's where the return oil union is attached under there so there's literally a, a pipe straight from the cooler to the tank there really neat and completely hidden away and then that enters uh, a, a centrifuge effectively in that billet part of the tank there's a there's a fabricated uh, cone with the top cut off if you if you like welded underneath that so the oil comes in and centrifuges around and down that cone which is where the, any, any air that's trapped in that oil is separated out. Uh, and then it runs down onto a baffle plate, which is actually welded to the top of the fabricated part of the tank and has a hole directly under the cap. So the oil centrifuges down the cone, drops onto the baffle plate and then runs across and down into the main body of the tank. Um, but because the hole in that baffle is directly under the cap, when you fill it, that fills directly down into the tank and also we'll have a dipstick on the bottom of this cap eventually um, to check the level. So the fuel tank was done by Concept Racing. Um, but a lot of the other parts, like the, the reservoirs there, we've done the fabrication in-house. Uh, and the dry sump tank, it, wa it was discussed maybe giving that to Concept, but Nat felt he didn't want to put that much pressure on them because the, the, anodote, the billet parts cost that much to machine. There was that much value in the parts. Making a mistake during the welding would have been a fairly costly mistake. So obviously he was nervous as hell, but I think he was happier taking on that responsibility himself rather than giving it to somebody else. 
Um, so yeah, he put quite a lot of time into forming the aluminium skin that actually forms the main part of the tank. Uh, I think we actually made a, a, a press tool to specifically press the exact radiuses on the corner of the tank. Um, so it perfectly matches the radiuses of the corners of the billet parts. Uh, and then he did the join, the vertical join down the tank on a corner. So there's half of the radius on one half of the join and half the radius on the other so that it's welded right down the corner because the, the, ex the existence of that radius means it won't distort when you, when you do the weld because it's supported by the curve effectively rather than doing it, if you did it on a big flat expanse there's a good chance of the alley starting to wrinkle up a bit. Um, so yeah, he'd done a pretty nice job of that. Once we'd mocked up the tank um, and were happy that that all fitted as it should, we then sent ev everything away to be anodised, including the two tanks at the back there, which have now been installed. Um, that's the screen wash tank and the brake fluid reservoir. The caps are worth noting. Um, we've used uh, sort of off-the-shelf industrial plastic baffled vented caps on both of those. Um, but then to make them look nice, we've just machined some little thin aluminium sort of capping sleeves with a knurled finish around the edge. Uh, had those anodised as well, and this cap on the on the main tank will be anodised black as well when we when we get to that stage. One of the other kind of domino effect jobs was now we've got the dry sump tank here, we're kind of confident to completely finalise the oil system plumbing. So we've specified all the exact uh, fittings and angles we want on that, and they're on order at the moment. So in the next well next week, I guess we'll we'll be making the oil lines up, which is all pretty much the last plumbing job. Fuel system plumbing's done. Um, Coolant plumbing, we've got a few clips to put on, but it's essentially done. Um, so yeah, the oil, oil plumbing will complete all of the plumbing jobs. Um, also, the brake plumbing is one that I think we were just working on last time, and that has now been completely finished. But we're running uh, AP four-pot calipers on the front with 254mm uh, AP discs, which is absolutely the biggest discs we can get inside those steel wheels and it's running Teflon uh, lined stainless braided hoses throughout on the on the brake plumbing. With all the, all the plumbing done and the exhaust done here and essentially the mechanical side of things is kind of 95 percent there so we've been turning our attention to the interior so come around here and I'll show you. Right so We've been trying to start chipping away at the interior jobs on the car, um, uh, first of which was the headlining, which actually is just a standard Escort headlining. Um, so we fitted the headlining, uh, we then upholstered the top part of the dash. I don't know if we've showed this before, but we've, we've made a fiberglass moulded top piece for the dash, because obviously the dash is now non-standard. Um, it's got the holes for the four vents, although they've not been cut through the Alcantara yet. Um, but yeah, we've now upholstered that dash top in Alcantara so we could get that on and get the vents in. Um, and once that job, job is done, we were confident to put the windscreen in then. Um, a couple of things, I don't know if we've mentioned this before either. The, we put demist uh, vents in the dash top. You can see there the little polished aluminium bezels around them. So we've got a heated screen as well. Um, we've got demist vents and we've got four dash vents and then the foot vents as well. Other bits of interior we've been working on, the door cards and the rear quarter cards. The door cards are just standard shaped door card. We've decided to make those though in plastic. They're normally made in kind of like a hardboard type material, um, which absorbs moisture and just generally seems like a strange thing to be using in this day and age. Um, so we've done the door cards and rear quarter cards in plastic. Dean's going to be leathering those door cards. Um, he'll also be uh, leather upholstering the, door, the pull handles on the doors. area the plan there always was for it to be a sort of luggage storage area that intentionally didn't look like a back seat um, the base we've made a, a, a panel that sits in the base to flatten it out basically which will be an area you can put a briefcase or a hold all into um, but because where we flatten that area out there are some sort of shapes in the floor beneath there was a kind of void under there which we were keen to make use of 
So we've made a couple of inlays that sit into there uh, with lids on them. So you've got a couple of little storage compartments for smaller items. The parcel shelf flat top here and the front here, they're going to be levered directly onto the metal work. The access here, which is to the strut tops to remove the strut tops, and also it, it, you've got the top adjuster on the damper here. We wanted to make a nice feature of those um, and make them reasonably easy to remove. So we've designed in 3D printed a, a panel that's going to go over each one of those that sort of slots in and then has a single uh, knurled knob on it to screw them down at, at this end and fasten them down. Um, and that will have like a little chromed bezel running around it. Um, just again, to tr try and break things up a little bit. It's, you often run the danger with these things of having massive expanses of black leather and it just starting to look a bit too simplified. So it's nice just to have a few things breaking the area up. This more complicated shape at the back here, which is standard, we've got a, a standard fiberglass reproduction parcel shelf, which we've cut that section out of, and we're just reshaping the front of it to curve down rather than curve forward. And then that's going to be trimmed in Alcantara to sort of mimic the Alcantara that's on the front. So you've got a splash of Alcantara at the back and on the dash there, and then everything between is black leather. We didn't actually mention last time, I think we filmed last time, but didn't show the chrome parts going on. So we've now finished the quarter light assemblies completely, those opening quarters with newly chromed handles on them. It's new glass throughout, don't know if I talked about that before. Um, brand new windows throughout, uh, obviously new seals throughout. We had the door handles disassembled and re-chromed. The boot lock, which isn't fitted, has been taken apart into its individual components and re-chromed. Oh, and the escort badge, which is not on at the moment. Um, and we're just in the process of having some badges made as well in conjunction with Cosworth, um, which is probably worth mentioning because we're getting a run of them done. Um, so you may also be able to have a badge that says Cosworth for your escort. Uh, it's, a, it's a replica of the twin cam uh, wing badge with a little checkered flag it, done in, in enamel filled cast metal. Um, but it says Cosworth rather than twin cam. So that should be a nice little touch. What's probably worth mentioning though is that on the 18th and 19th of May we're going to be taking this car to Retro Rides Weekender at Goodwood and this is going to be the first time we've really showed the car off in public. I don't expect it'll be totally finished then but it'll be very close to being finished um, so we'll be there to chat to anybody who wants to come and see the car, show you around. You can tell us we've done it wrong if you want. Uh, and we're going to have a lot of other, our other cars there as well. I think um, about 15 of our customers are bringing their own cars um, that we've built to the show. And there's a, a few of them in particular we're going to be showing off alongside this. So uh, it'd be great to see you there and have a chat about cars and drink beer. <laughs> Excitement levels are enormous. Enormous. Uh, to, to be honest, I'm excited about Retro Rides Weekend. I'm kind of slightly stressed about it because I've got an enormous amount of organising to do. And we've got, you know, normally we rock up with like five or six people from work and a couple of mates and we do barbecues and beer and stuff. And this time we've got 70 something guests <laughs> invited with us. So we've got to entertain and feed and water nearly 80 people. I've got to be making sure that I've got everything lined up and all plans in place but that's going all right I've made a start I've made a start so you know <laughs> and then like, what kind of state is this going to be in at the, um, the only unknown is the interior okay. uh, I think it will be wired mechanically finished most of the interior done I don't know if we'll have got as far as upholstering the door cards and seats basically the leather work because I know Dean has got a fair stack of work in front of him. He was also for, forging ahead with the 108 Mercedes, Project Kaiser. Um, and there's a huge amount of leather work to do on that. Um, so it just depends. And unfortunately, he's got a very badly timed holiday next week. <laughs> so, so it depends. That, that will be the stumbling block, is that we may not have all the leather upholstery done. But I think other than that, it'll be pretty much there. If we can get it, if it can, if it can be starting and running, that would be great. I, I, in all honesty, I don't, just 
I have it in my head that it's miles off that point, but it isn't really. We could pretty much put, connect everything up and put fluids in it next week. Adam will vouch for this. <laughs> it's pretty, pretty close to just, yeah, I mean, yeah. we've got to clip the fuel lines up, put those oil lines, get the oil lines made. And at that point, it's only the wiring that's standing in front of it being able to run. And I got all the connectors for the wiring yesterday. So if I just pull my finger out and do the, the loom design and we get that made, the, then yeah, it's basically at the point we can just start it up and try everything out. So people can come to RetroRides and... See it running. I'm not saying that one, can I? <laughs> <laughs>